Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, no one could survive or accept this situation. Now, first of all, I want to thank everybody that views these videos to subscribe, view, comment, and respond. A heartfelt thank you. Now, getting into the study. What topic could we be talking about here that no one would ever accept or survive this given situation? Well, it has to do with Jesus Christ of Scripture. And it has to do with the reality of what Jesus Christ experienced. Well, let's see if you could handle that situation that he has every day in today's realm also. Now, we're going to start uh, in the book of Matthew. I'm going to give you some scripture here, first of all, to kind of give you an idea of what the theme might be. And then we'll get into what it really is. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, he talks about something. Uh, and starting, and we'll start Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And this is Jesus talking. He says, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And verse 23, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Now, with that one, let's move on to the next one. And this is also in Matthew chapter 26 now. We will read about two episodes here. And we're going to start in verse 17. In the book of Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> Matthew says, in verse 17, Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Verse 18, And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Now verse 19, And the disciples did as Jesus appointed them, and they made ready for the Passover. Now verse 20, Now when the it was even, even was, when even, has come, he sat down with the twelve. Verse 21, And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And verse 22, And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Verse 23, And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Verse 24, And the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. And then a little bit later on in the chapter 26, we talk about Peter. And we'll start in verse 31. Verse 31 says, And then Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. And verse 32, But then, after I have risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Verse 33, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Verse 34, And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that, that this night, before the 
cock crow crows, thou shalt deny me thrice, or deny me three times. Now verse 35, this is important. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. Now you might be getting an idea of what's happening here. We're going to get into uh, 2 Timothy. Now here in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read a verse, a couple of them here for you. In fact, three of them. And this is what it says, starting in verse 11. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, and these will all tie in with the study. It is a faithful saying, verse 11 says in chapter 2, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Verse 13, if we believe not, yet he but abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. These are some very interesting verses, and they all have a common denominator if you've been paying attention or reading along. Something's been going on here that Jesus dealt with every day on his earthly ministry. And sadly enough today, ladies and gentlemen, he deals with it today on a daily basis, even in the spirit. Now, this is something that he'll de he deals with. It is something that you would never be able to survive or accept what he goes through all the time even since his ascension into glory, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, after he revealed the revelation of the mystery to, of himself by his preaching of the revelation of the mystery, according to Paul's gospel. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there are many people out there today that deny Christ. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Put yourself in this position. We'll use carnal examples here to get the point across. You don't exist. Or you think you do. But what if nobody recognizes you as a human being? What if nobody recognizes your existence? What if everybody had apathy towards you, even though you've existed or you are existing to this day? You have a history in the past, you're in the present, and you hopefully will be in the future until whenever your day comes that you leave this earth. But people deny it, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody recognizes you. Nobody recognizes you for your accomplishments. No matter how you perceive yourself and how you project yourself to society, society rejects you. You don't exist. Everything you've done means nothing to society and to the people around you. It literally is everything about you is important to you, does not matter at all to anybody. You're being totally rejected by your fellow man. You're being rejected by your family. You're being rejected by your friends. Everybody that you come in contact with don't, don't want anything to do with what it is that's going on in your life. They don't want to hear about anything about you. They're not interested because they don't believe you. Because you really don't exist, see. Or you say, you, you stand there and you say, you probably scream it at the top of your lungs already because you're so frustrated that nobody believes you. Nobody believes you're alive. Nobody believes in you. You just, you can't believe what's happening to you because you're part of society. You're part of this vast civilization. You desire uh, com communication, fellowship, you desire company, you desire to be accepted, you desire for all these things because you desire love and companionship and you can't get any of them because nobody believes you or even believes that you exist. How long would it take you to lose your mind completely and do something very drastically? What if you knew people that were out to get you? Eventually, 
in one way, shape, or form. And you just had to wait your time for it to happen. And you weren't going to do anything. You couldn't do anything to change the situation. How would you react? Because remember, in the, most people's eyes, you don't exist. Most people will deny you. They'll even deny that they ever knew who you were, what you were about, and what your life was like. Even though you shared your life with many people. You've interacted with many people. You were living proof that you were here, that you've done things. And you would like maybe just a little bit of recognition for the good deeds that you did, and hopefully they will forget the bad deeds that you did. But nevertheless, you were here. You've done things. And yet, you're being denied. You don't exist, see. And the day you take your last breath, it'll be much easier for people to not only deny you, but in total apathy, forget all about you and not even bring you into any kind of conversation ever when those that knew you, that you thought, were your friends, your companions, your family, everybody that you once knew, never mention your name. And if somebody brings your name up, they'll deny that they know you. They're going to deny that you even existed. How would that make you feel? How would that play with your being, ladies and gentlemen? Because you're screaming now. You're just beside yourself. I'm here. I'm alive. I've done these things. Please, somebody recognize me as a fellow human being. Well, how do you think Jesus Christ feels? Because Jesus Christ did something you're never going to do, something I'm never going to do, and that is to die in the place of someone else, to take on their sins on the cross. He did it for the whole world, for every living human being. Ladies and gentlemen, every living human being. And yet today, he looks down. And he sees the multitudes of people denying him in his truth. Like he never existed. You saw the examples in scripture. And I can give you examples in scripture where they also left Paul. As he followed Christ. You can read about that in uh, Timothy. Where all those that were with him in Ephesus departed from him. Even when he was ready to give up. His life, there was no one there for him. It's like he never existed. And it's not hard for people to deny Paul today also. But it's much easier for them to deny Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I've listened to people. I can't have conversations with them. But I can listen to their ideologies and their thought process. And they'll go through the whole realm of uh, evolutionists, uh, scientific theories, uh, Big Bang, you name it. Uh, they have all these scientific theories about the evolution of the human existence, how long it's been there, and how they evolved and whatever. And they'll deny totally ever bringing up Jesus Christ. It doesn't even exist. In fact, they'll call it a Jesus fallacy, a fairy from the sky. I mean, I've heard a lot of different terms, and it's very hurtful when I hear these terms, but I don't respond to these terms because I know it's futile to do so and these poor people are just lost. But Jesus Christ hears them all the time. Because to him, you can bet your bottom dollar, it's a personal thing to be denied. And people do it enough, well, they will turn and have such a hardened heart that Jesus Christ will give them over to a hardened heart where they will continue to deny him. And guess what? He will deny them before the Father. But one thing Jesus Christ can't do that you can, you can deny Jesus Christ, but he cannot deny himself. He knows who he is. He knows what he's done and he knows what he's offered people. Salvation by grace through faith at the finished work of the cross. The reason he went to the cross. 
He was fully God all the time, and he still is fully God now in the spirit, as he was prior, because we worship God in the spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in his spirit and in truth. And when he ascended back into glory, he was back in the spirit where he is today. Yet look at what mankind does. Look what your religions do. Look what you Christians do. You deny Jesus Christ at every part that you can in your doctrine of Christianity because you follow a false Jesus Christ of Christianity and not the Jesus Christ of Scripture. Or you claim to use a lot of the Scripture. Oh, I, I believe I'm a Christian. I'm, I believe in Jesus myself. I follow Jesus Christ myself. You're following wrong doctrine. You're mixing law and grace. You're denying the work of the cross. Jesus Christ will profit you nothing, and he will be of none effect unto you. Because you're totally denying him, because you're denying the finished work of the cross. And you do this every time you go to worship. He hears this from you people all the time, every day. But you found out what it's like if you put yourself in some kind of shoes where everybody denies the very existence of you. Everything you stand for, everything you've done, everything you've worked for, everything about you. They've twisted, perverted, made it into a false entity where you don't even exist. You're a false entity. You want to talk about a vanity of a life, that would be one, wouldn't it? And look how you'd react. Don't tell me you could accept and live like that. No human being could. Because we're designed for fellowship. When we were made in the likeness of God, people make the huge mistake of thinking God looks like us. We were created in his image when he was in the spirit. And we desire that camaraderie that he desires of us to make it complete. That's how we become his body. That was designed before the foundation of the world, even before we were created in his image to fulfill the body of Christ's church. That precedes everything else, ladies and gentlemen, and it's in the spirit. Never to be denied. And you can deny all you want. And look what happens to the people in Scripture that have denied Jesus Christ, have denied, have been in that unbelief. They are never going to be in the kingdom of God wherever. They're never going to be in the kingdom of heaven. They're never going to be under grace. They're never going to have salvation because they deny the very existence of Jesus Christ in one way, shape, form, or another. And they don't even realize it that they are. See, that's the cleverness of somebody called Satan who also wants you to deny Jesus Christ at every chance he gets you to do it. You even deny Jesus Christ in your worship, in your local church, and yet you think you aren't. But isn't that typical of a religious person? Look what happened to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. He told them, you are of your father, the devil. When they thought they were serving their almighty God, and they portrayed it to the known world then, especially to the nation of Israel, they were the religious leaders praising their Yahweh. And living to serve him. And yet they were denying the very God all that time. So denial to God is nothing new. But it's a painful entity. And it's there because of sin. And someday that denial will come to an end. Because he says something, and I'm going to show you in scripture... And it's interesting how you read Scripture, because you've got to be careful when you read Scripture. You don't want to read it too quickly. You might put something in there that isn't in there. Uh, he, I do believe it's in, yes, it's in Philippians chapter 2. Now this part about denial of Jesus Christ. And he says this in verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and in earth and under the earth. And verse 11, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He never said that every knee will or every tongue will. He said they should. 
giving them the chance, you see. He never took away their choice to choose. But mankind will always, without Jesus Christ in their lives, will choose the denial way out. And I just want you to think about that and look back at the history in Scripture and find out that every time that then, from the very beginning, when the woman did what? Believed the serpent. Who did she deny? The very God that gave her husband, Adam, the commandment not to eat or partake of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because the, the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And poor thing, she paraphrased it, but nevertheless, she knew what was right and what was wrong. But the serpent took advantage of that, and the poor woman denied the commandment of God by choice exercising her freedom in this choice that caused the fall of all mankind when Adam took of the fruit and ate of it. If you notice in Scripture, now like I said, you read Scripture carefully, and Scripture does say that Eve was enticed later on by the serpent, but look at what happened in chapter 3. Everybody blames the woman. That isn't the right thing, because nothing happened until Adam ate of the fruit. Then their eyes were open. They, her eyes weren't open before that, were they? It doesn't say that. You can't put it in there. You can assume that. But you get in trouble when you assume what Scripture says and what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that. It says after he took and eat of, ate of the fruit that she gave to him, their eyes were opened. And they knew they were naked. But it's because of denial. And we looked at what happened on Jesus' earthly ministry. It never changed. It never went away. They denied him so much that the nation of Israel, through the uh, help and enticement of Satan and his devices, ended up handing Jesus over to the Romans and Pontius Pilate to be crucified on the cross. Lo and behold, the only thing I did a video on this, and if you want to know about it, just look back at my ar archives. Jesus went to the cross by his own free will. Had nothing to do with Satan's devices, had nothing to do with the Jews. But the example of the Jews being in unbelief, in denial of Jesus Christ as who he was, <coughs> Satan used to his advantage. And Jesus Christ ended up going to the cross. Has it changed today? Look at religions. How many religions don't even accept a Jesus Christ? Oh, some will tell you about a Jesus Christ, but in a whole different realm. He's a prophet. He's not God by any means. He's just a prophet. Or in some religions, he's the son. Him and Lucifer are brothers. I'd like to see where that is in Scripture. But again, that's in their own beliefs, their own religions. Even in Christianity, they deny the Jesus Christ of Scripture. And they have their own Jesus Christ of their religions. And it says plainly, when Jesus Christ preached the revelation of the mystery, the Bible says that he did, according to Paul's gospel, he preached the revelation of the mystery of himself, which, by, which was by grace through faith, where it should be apparent that you are either going to accept Jesus Christ and salvation by grace through faith, or you're going to deny Jesus Christ. See, you have something in you, besides the knowledge of good and evil and the ability to do something that Jesus Christ himself could never do. Because you will deny Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ said he will deny you in front of the Father. And you will continue to deny Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is, but you can deny who he is. You can deny that he ever existed. You can deny and say, this is all a great lie. This is all fabricated by mankind. Oh, it's written history, but it's all you can't believe the stories in there. Come on, what kind of a fool do you take me for? 
And then you come here to tell me that I can be saved by grace just through faith and believing the finished work of the cross. No matter what I've done, nothing's going to be held against me. Well, I don't even believe that because I don't even believe I have to answer for anything I ever did to anybody in this world because once I die, I become worm food. Have you ever heard that ridiculous statement? I've always said when people say stuff like that, be careful what it is you say. You just may end up fulfilling your very own prophecy or your destiny, however you want to look at it, because you're going to deny Jesus Christ the very last time. And if you deny Jesus Christ the very last time, there isn't anything, even grace, will not be able to save you. The power of God will be justifiable in not saving you. I want you to think about that for a minute. If you deny Jesus Christ, and don't sit here and tell me you're going to comment on this video and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in what my church teaches. I believe in what the Bible says. Well, you can't have it all. There's the Jesus Christ of Scripture, period. And there's a Jesus Christ of religion, like Christianity, period. They're different. Because Christianity and your religions of mankind mixes everything together. There isn't a Jesus Christ in this Bible that mixes law and grace. He doesn't do that. He tells you not to. He uses Paul to give us <coughs> direction and instruction <coughs> and correction and doctrine so that we don't do this. And yet, what do you do? You continue to deny the Jesus Christ of Scripture and continue to practice in your religion, especially of Christianity. You'll deny what is said in this Bible. Or you'll read it, and you're going to listen to what it is your Christianity tells you to believe about this book because they're going to put it up with their doctrine of their religion. I don't care what denomination you belong to, what church you go to, what preacher you listen to. It's all pre-programmed and designed to keep you in the dark, keep you lost, and to believe in a false salvation message. That fruit today is still around, but it's not the fruit that you think it is. It's the fruit of the spirit of this world. Once you take it and eat of it, there's no turning back. And denying Jesus Christ will be as easy as taking a breath every time you need to breathe. You won't even think about it after a while. It comes automatically. And that's what Jesus Christ faces every day of his, of his eternal existence in the spirit because of you and you're denying or oh, you don't like it when people deny you even exist do you but you have no problem denying Jesus Christ ever existed or you didn't you don't believe this is what he means when he says this you don't believe what it is you read you can't believe what the book says that's all a bunch of hogwash guess what you're denying one thing you deny it at all you can't deny one thing and believe another and expect that to be a truth. You can't mix them. Because one little lie will contaminate a thousand truths. And one truth does not uncontaminate a thousand lies. It just exposes the thousand lies. Then it's up to you to believe it is what you want. You can be headstrong. You can be stubborn. You can be whatever adjective you want to put to it. You can be indoctrinated. I don't care what it is to believe what it is you want to believe. That is your right. Jesus Christ never took that away from you. So you'll continue to believe what it is you want to believe. No matter what it is that's shown to you or whatever it is presented to you, you don't care about. Because that's not truth, see. The truth is what you believe because the truth is relative to you. See, it's not relative to someone like me that's saved by grace of faith. The truth is Jesus Christ and his word. That's what's important. It isn't important what I believe. It's important is what Jesus Christ said and expects you to believe. But again, it's your choice. 
He's not going to hound you. I'm not going to hound you. You listen to this video, you make up your own mind what it is you want to believe. But if you want to believe what Jesus Christ says, and you want to receive it in the Spirit by the free gift of God, you need to be saved by grace through faith. And believe the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. All you have to do is believe it. Not deny it. It says in verse 1, Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel, which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, That he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now you believe that by faith through grace, because it says in the revelation of the mystery, in the doctrine for the body of Christ church, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. In verse 9, not of works lest any man should boast. That's all it is. And it's just by believing. You know, there's only one thing that's going to send people to hell, ladies and gentlemen, and eventually to the great white throne judgment and to the lake of fire. That is in unbelief or in the denying of the Lord Jesus Christ of Scripture. Are you going to be one of those? Are you going to be headstrong knowing what it is best for you? Think about what Jesus Christ goes through in the eternities, in the spirit, when you deny him. The minute you wake up, until the minute you close your eyes and go to sleep. How many times have you think of Jesus Christ during the day? How many times do you worship him? Once a week, that's plenty. Sometimes I can't even make it that many times. But I try. I do the best I can. Wouldn't that be something if Jesus Christ had that attitude when he went to the cross? You cannot handle total denial of your existence. What makes you think Jesus Christ wants to experience that on a daily basis? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study from my home to your home. And this is Robert Hollis. Thank you for taking the time to observe this video. And always remember, good Lord willing, until next time.